Dr. Patrick Gomez, the SCP Secretary General. The Honorable Camilla Johnson Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of Jamaica and President in Office of the SCP Council of Ministers. Professor the Honorable Robert Desi, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Cooperation and African Integration of Togo. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, may I begin by expressing my personal appreciation and indeed of the development family within the UN for being invited to share our sense and show our fidelity to the constituency of developing countries called the SCP. In my brief remarks, I will attempt to do a very modest job. First, reaffirm the reality of a very complex and transforming international community with new challenges for the SCP member states. Two, try to look at the possible opportunities that come within this changing dynamic. And three, try to argue that this changing setting calls for a greater reaffirming of the sense of belonging together of the members of the SCP. You meet here in Lome, the historical capital of Togo, at a time when we in the development community have growing anxieties about the nexus between trade and development. As you may all know, the multilateral rules making system has become dysfunctional in Geneva. The usual rituals of ministerial meetings are not going, are giving any reassurances that the agenda of the developing countries, principle being among the SCP countries, that disciplining international trade rule making will deliver on development results has faltered. Indeed, I will share a sense that I expressed at the annual meeting of the World Bank a few months ago, that while globalization has manufactured angry reactors to its exclusiveness, mostly in the industrial north, the maleficence of a bad globalization is leaving behind a lot of hungry and angry people in SCP countries, just that they don't have an access to the medium the way the middle classes that are shrinking in Europe and America are do. So our silence sometimes is being mistaken as if it's a celebration. It's just the absence of the ability to show that inequality is breeding anxiety and anger. Today, as we meet here, there has been major transformation in the pathways to transformation, both in the SCPs and in other parts of the world. There has been major changes in the geometry of regional development, both within the SCP community and the rest of the world. There has been a change in the geometry of political engagement in Europe and in the European Union. As Britain looks increasingly at home to deal with the consequences of an angry referendum, I think it is disillusionary, particularly among the Commonwealth members of the SCP, to assume that they are now going to negotiate a better market access into Britain. From where I sit in Geneva, it's my understanding and expectation. One, that Britain will mind much more building capacity on its engagement with the European Union. Two, it will look for strengthening a new model of bilaterals across the Atlantic. And three, it will use the EU a key for its relationship with the developing world. In other words, the status quo that exists today, subject to improvements in the negotiations with Brussels, is going to be the indicator of Commonwealth countries' engagement with Britain in trade matters. Of course, a number of things have also changed in addition to this. There is excitement and anxiety about all those changes in the new levers of trade, be it in additive manufacturing, sometimes called 3D printing, the movement towards the Internet of Things through big data, analytics, 5G technology in telecommunications, and the growing power of innovative Internet platform companies. 
But there are opportunities that also come with this. Members of the SCP family have demonstrated in some areas that the ability to ride out opportunities of the service industry on the basis of a new virtual infrastructure because of the digital economy's opportunities. But instead of going into details about what changes are happening in the world, I think it suffices to mention this, that as you look to negotiate new pathways beyond 2020, you must be alive to the declining glue that held you together and the declining interest of those that would rather see you apart. You may think you only share a sense of history, but there's also a reality that you must have learned over the years of negotiation that negotiating anything on a wholesale market is always more profitable and more competitive than negotiating it on a retail market. Any time you undertake reforms that reduce your numbers, it marks so much a reduction in your ability to arm twist anybody. At a time when a leading player in global commerce, the, the, the trade diplomacy, the US, is more interested in bilateral negotiations, at a time when the issues are so complex that none of your member states can master this on the separate ground, the need for you to synergize your efforts has never been greater. It's not just because of the arithmetics of negotiation. There are some concrete areas where working as SCP brings critical benefit to the members of this community. I'll give you just two or three examples. Number one, the most vulnerable people to unsustainable fisheries subsidies and illicit fishing activity are artisanal fishermen and women and small-scale fishing enterprises in vulnerable economies predominantly of the SCP member states. At a time when WTO's ability to make rules that govern and discipline fisheries, subsidies, and other distortions of fishing, in line with the aspirations of SDG 16.4, that will harvest fisheries discipline by 2020, and WTO is paralyzed, a strong united voice of SCP member states putting the issue back to the UN to resolve it by amendments to the Convention on the Rule of the Sea, the Law of the Sea, is a critical phenomenon and you can only gain that momentum by sticking together. Number two, in IMF's own accounts, as of April this year, out of 69 poorest countries in the world, only 11 were free of the risk of debt default. We, for years, have been negotiating and urging for embracing principles, sustainable principles of sovereign lending and borrowing and a debt workout mechanism. It is inevitable that very many of your members will soon be defaulting on the public debt, often not by any mistake of your own by the behavior of hedge funds and the rising interest rates in the US. Your ability to stick together, to find dignified ways of dealing with debt overhang on our economies is of critical importance for your aspirations as countries. Three, it is our view that while you have played your part in a world that has been liberalizing trade through trade facilitation, you have come to a point where you have to be the main voices of saying pari passu with trade facilitation must be investment facilitation. And the voice of opening up the possibilities of growing value in your territories as engage with ever complex and changing global value chains is an impetus for closer integration and sharing your views. I don't think I can preach much more than those who have said before me that at a critical moment like this, you will end a varied regional integration initiatives I salute and encourage the African continental free trade area. I salute and encourage the growing resurgence of the South Pacific Forum. I am very celebratory of the historical strength and the resurgence of CARICOM. 
but it's important that beyond your regional integration efforts, in fact, in support of those regional integration efforts, your global shared platform, speaking with one voice, as embracing European Union, remains more important today than it was ever before. My final word to the representatives of the European Union here present. At a time of shifting pillars of global trade diplomacy, with the US in retreat, with China resurgent as a major player, European Union cannot afford to underpunch. We have seen in the recent past how the dynamism of European Union's legislation on the governance of global platform companies is giving a world a model of sustainable virtual integration. Let a similar sense of responsibility grow in how Europe engages the most vulnerable among us, knowing that building productive capacity and sustainable economies in the SCP is the best way of sustaining global engagement, stepping, stemming economic migration, and building to the dreams of a shared future in Agenda 2030. Thank you for your kind attention.